Hi, my name is Jana and I'm from Bulgaria. I'm 19 years old and yeah, that's it. I'm Emma, Emma Lupin, double P double A. I'm from Australia, uh, from Melbourne. My name is Ella Schwartzbaum. I grew up in New York City in the Upper West Side, which is a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. I'm Anto. I'm an I'm 18 years old. I am Giancarlo, Gianji, as everyone knows me. Um, I'm from Italy, from Milan. My name is Benjamin. I'm from Austria, and I'm 20 years old. I'm Fanny from Switzerland. Okay, I'm Rochelle from Mexico City. I'm Michelle from Mexico City. Yeah, I was actually born in New York, but I moved to Melbourne when I was three. And yeah, I have a sister, older, two parents, <laughs> mother and dad. Cool. Very regular. <laughs> They're the doctors, very boring, very Jewish. Well, my personal Jewish history is pretty short. Uh, my mom converted when I was three years old. Uh, my dad's not Jewish, and I converted with my mom, so I'm actually the first generation, sort of. And still, I feel really Jewish because I grew up in a Jewish environment since my early childhood. And yeah, I went to a Jewish youth organization and went to the synagogue every Saturday and still go when I'm in Austria. We don't know exactly, but probably my father's family was from North Africa and my mother's family probably was from Spain. Obviously it's not just family history but it's really connected to Jewish history. So, not both of my parents are Jewish, only my father was Jewish and all of his family was really Jewish. Like he ruined the Jewish connection when he married a Christian and my mother My grand grandfathers were from, well, from the my mom's part from Poland, and from my father from Germany. One one story that my grandfather likes to tell is that his my paternal side of the family has been in America for around six generations now. Like I'm a sixth generation New Yorker or something, but apparently my grandfather had some relative who changed his name thought it wasn't as Jewish, so during the Depression he wasn't helped out. So like he was kicked out of the Jewish circle. So as far as I can tell, on my on my paternal side, I think that like my father's parents and pretty much all of his relatives, because his relatives are from America, like from those past generations, and my paternal grandmother is Hungarian. And I'm pretty sure that their families have always been active Jews. My family coming from Munich was really assimilated. Um, the ones from Poland were religious and the ones from Israel were religious um, and, and the ones mm, and then like the Swiss family is like everyone was religious but not really really religious like they because it was such a small community it was like you didn't have a choice to be Shomel Shabbat, like to keep Shabbat or not, but to, you just... They kept everything, but they weren't really religious. My grandparents, both of them, they were in, like born in Russia. And I think that also my father was born there. And my mother is originally from Bulgaria, yeah. Like, you could say that they've always been there because it wasn't like my great grandparents who like came to Chile and it was in, like before the first world war so they came mainly from Spain, Italy and Turkey. I made a trip with my family to Poland to go to the to the um, place our family originally comes from. My mother's family her father came from Berlin and was part of that like elite assimilated Jewish class, so I'm not sure how active they were, but then he and my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, both moved to Israel, so they clearly had a Jewish connection. Okay, my grandmother is from Poland, 
and my grandfather is from Poland, but is like in a village. He's Rothschild. Rod, I don't remember the name. It's like Rothschild, like something like that. Uh, also, one side of my family there was an exhibition in Germany about them. So it was like a big gathering of all the family, which is now and distributed all over the world. So it was really interesting. Uh, mainly Polish. Um, my mom's side is basically all Polish. A small bit of it's English. My dad came from South Africa, so he's mostly Lithuanian, a little bit Latvian. Everyone from South Africa is Lithuanian. Yeah, I think they were probably shtetl Jews for most of it. Yeah. Until the Enlightenment, and then they were in cities. My Jewish family was really Jewish. Like they really kept the traditions. Like I don't, I don't think that they were like religious, but they were like really traditional people and. They, they like wanted to keep this tradition, like yeah. Actually, aside from Aboriginals, there were Jews in Australia from the beginning. Obviously, aside from Aboriginals, they're the original Australians. Remember, <laughs> um, <laughs> on the first fleet, because it's an interesting fact. Actually, there's the highest. There was the highest proportion of Jews in Australia after the first fleet because the Jews in England were very poor. So there were lots of criminals, so they got sent on the boats. So there have been some, I think it was like, there's a few books and things, it was quite difficult to keep just Jews together, because in places where you're farming and things like that. Most of the Melbourne Jewish community came from Eastern Europe slightly before and a lot after the war. We have, aside from Israel, the largest number of Holocaust survivors in the world, but most of them are dying now, but yeah, so it's a very Eastern European kind of community. The community in Milan is uh, an old community, but it changed a lot after uh, all the Jewish people from North Africa moved to Italy, because many of them came, from, came to, to Milan, and in that period uh, the community got became much bigger than before and I don't know much about the community in Milan I know something more about the community in Rome and that is one of the oldest I think the oldest one in Europe well Vienna was basically one of the hotspots of Judaism for like many hundred years like Vienna was called the Jewish city so we had like around 3,000 Jews 4,000 Jews maybe more now we're a really small community nowadays we're maybe thousands, maybe less. And they have also a special language that is really funny. It's a mix between uh, Roman dialect, Italian and, uh, and Hebrew. It's uh, really, really funny. And even if you're Italian, you cannot understand what they're saying. And it's something like uh, similar to Yiddish, but the Italian version. They first um, went to Veracruz um, and after that, some uh, went to Mexico City, another from Pachuca, mm, some different city, but most of all from Mexico City. Also in Monterrey are, are many Jewish. It's a and Guadalajara. And Guadalajara. I think, I think, in Switzerland, 18,000 and in Zurich, 8,000. We are 40,000. In Italy, because our community uh, our communities are really old, uh, the traditions are really important, we are like, we have special Italian traditions that are also different from one city to another. There were Jews for a long time in this area, but in the mid and how is it? Okay. 16th century, um, it was really hard for them because they were only allowed to live in specific villages. So there are like still three villages um, where you can go and you see like that there was no Jewish community, but it doesn't exist anymore. And so they were allowed to live there and to trade in, in like to go to the cities for trade. But they, for example, they had to pay a lot for to enter the city for a day. I guess I, yeah, I could tell you the short story where there's the first wave of German immigrants that were the elite assimilated class. 
that fit in, and then you get all the shtetl Jews that the Germans resented because they gave the bad image, and that they lived in the tenements, and they built their community up together. But at this point, being in a Jew in New York City doesn't mean anything. It's a really close community. They live all together. Uh, it's a huge community. Um, and an important thing about their history is that uh, they were in the Vatican State for like many, many, many uh, centuries, and so uh, they lived in in the ghetto for all these centuries. So it's a really particular and special uh, community. I know that before the Second World War, oh, yeah, before the Second World War, they were like. 50,000 Jews in Bulgaria so we saved most of them and the Jewish community was really strong it was like all over Bulgaria for example Washomer Atsir had 8 cans 8 can im in Bulgaria the Jewish community in, in Rome and in Italy in general had a really bad time in during the second world war First they lived like in the center of the city and they've been moving like more to the outside of the city because well, they've been getting like into higher social classes. We sent 11,000 to Treblinka because they were like, now it's the, the area that they were sent from, it's now part of Bulgaria but then it wasn't like our part. When the Nazi took most of the people from the community, uh, from the from the ghetto, and they just put them in a in a prison, really next to the Vatican City, and there's a big uh, there's a big discussion about that between the Jewish community now and the and the Vatican, because the Vatican said that the Pope did something for them, and the Jewish community said that instead it was like they were there he the, the Pope perfectly knew that they were there and he didn't do nothing they were really kind of isolated from society and it took a long time until they um, got the same rights and after um, and for example the Swiss Jews the one who are like there for a long time they're really proud of that now it's not that extreme anymore but like in the in the during the Holocaust when many Jews from East Europe came to Switzerland they kind of didn't want them because they were really like they were rich and assimilated and and they wanted to be part of this society and suddenly like these poor Jews came and they kind of didn't identify with them and sometimes they even made it harder for them more than 1,000 people were uh, uh, deported and to ha to Auschwitz and almost all the Jewish families in Rome or and in Italy they have some kind of relatives that went to Auschwitz or somewhere else and and died there. In 1991 and 1992 there was like huge Aliyah process like most Bulgarian Jews made Aliyah, and now there are like a lot of Jewish communities, Bulgarian communities in Israel, like in Yafo and in Bat Yam. And the Jewish people in Bulgaria they stayed, and so we have Jewish community, and we live our happy Jewish life in Bulgaria. We are in the Jewish school in Mexico. I went to a Jewish school, but in Bulgaria, the Jewish school it's not only like it's not private Jewish school, it's a normal public school that also Bulgarians can go. I did not go to a Jewish school. I went to an international school and we had Hebrew classes there, we had religion there, we had Arabic religion, we had Christian, like Islam Christian and, and Jewish religion there. It was because our school is like one of the best schools in, in Sofia because it's like the Jewish people have money. So we have really nice base and also the teachers are one of the best in Bulgaria. So it's like 
it's good to study in our school because you know that apart from your the Jewish like study that you get you get your Bulgarian studies are like really really on high level. I went to Bialik, which is a secular apparently non politically affiliated school, but it's conservative so I think it's fairly right wing, but whatever. Um, then there's Scopus, which and like Bialik's kind of small, mostly rich, spoiled kids. <laughs> so almost Jews in Melbourne. Anyway, then there's Scopus, which is like the big central Jewish school. They're modern Orthodox, quite conservative, um, but a lot of like the Jewish community really centered around Scopus. Then there's King David, which is a small reform school. It's kind of like the Dug one that charges less and takes any kids. Um, then there's Yavna, which is Orthodox or modern Orthodox, more religious, you know, Kipotz, it's it, that kind of thing. Then there's Beth Rivka, the old, like very religious girls school, yeshiva is a very religious boys school, and then I think there's like an adas school, but adas is like this crazy, crazy ultra-orthodox, like beyond black coat community that no one interacts with, so. Maybe it's interesting for for the kids in my school that they're not Jewish. I, like, I never heard someone to, to tell, oh, I don't want to study that stupid language. No, I, I mean, like, I don't think that you, you are more of a Jew or not, if you know, or in Hebrew, but I think that it, it's, it's more helpful, to say, like, if you come to Israel, it's easier to, like, understand um, how the Jews live here and stuff, because you can speak to people. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's a necessity. I think it just, it, it's like something else, like plus, but it's not a necessity. I don't know if it's important to, to know Hebrew to be Jewish, but maybe more Yiddish. Because Yiddish is getting lost, and a lot of people speak Yiddish in German, and in, in Germany, and in Austria, and my mom speaks Yiddish, and I think that's, that's more important than Hebrew. Hebrew is more like a modern language, except when you pray. That's, why, that's, that's also why the religious people don't speak Hebrew, they speak Yiddish, because they hold the language. Hebrew. It's definitely important to being in Israel, but I don't think that you necessarily need to come to Israel to be Jewish though to feel a connection to Israel helps. No, no, I don't think. Only if it's you live here in Israel. Yeah, it's important to, to know the holidays and the, the songs of the Jewish are in Hebrew, mm -hmm. but it's not kind of important to know Hebrew. No, if you live like, outside Israel, you don't need it, but for example, for me, like here, the people ask me, uh, why you don't know um, Hebrew? And they feel, well, I feel like they're discriminating, like me, because I don't know Hebrew here. Mm, I don't think that it's so important to know Hebrew if you're Jewish. Because, like, now we are living modern life and we, like, we can communicate, like, with other languages like you see now I'm speaking English not Hebrew and I think that's that's not the most important thing to if you're Jewish to, to know Hebrew it's a hard question because I think that there's a lot more to being Jewish than just the religion there's the culture and things like that so I think if you know a few scattered words like I feel like maybe if you know the word Shalom like that's a good word to know but I don't to be fluent in Hebrew I don't think it's necessary at all, or necessarily connected to being Jewish. When I was little, like, my dad doesn't really like the religion stuff, so we didn't celebrate, like, any Hagim or anything. So, like, I knew my fa my mom's family was Jewish, but I didn't understand, like, what's being a Jew. And when my parents split up, when I grew up, I started like, hey, I think it's cool, maybe we can start making like celebrate and the Hagin traditions and stuff. I was like in a project where firstly it's Jewish teenagers from all over the country having workshops about Jewish life in Switzerland, Jewish history in Switzerland, um, Israeli politics, everything, and religion. and then like the project is that then you go always in couples to to classes um mostly not in cities but like people who never met jews before and you 
tell them about your life and how actually normal you are. <laughs> so, yeah. My mom, my mom's family is, or her parents immigrated to Israel, so she grew up not religious, because in Israel pretty much it's secular or religious. So she doesn't like, my mother doesn't like going to synagogue or to things like that. But she goes to a Hebrew book club and she likes singing in the choir. So it's not that she doesn't like uh, Jews or like being in the Jewish community, it's just not necessarily synagogue. My dad had a more conservative like 1950s America upbringing. So he goes to synagogue. I think it's more out of habit, but outside of synagogue, he's not really part of a Jewish community either. But my mom sings in the Jewish choir. Um, mostly Hebrew and Yiddish songs and she makes Italian lessons for Jewish kids in the community. Like the reason why we moved to Australia from America is because my mom's side of the family, like there's a lot of family here, not here, in Melbourne and so we do all the Chagim together and this and that and so yeah and that's like my mom grew up in Mount Spick, she went to Yavna in primary parents had no idea it was religious because we're not religious at all <laughs> and then Mount Scopus in secondary it's like all of her friends are still in like lots are still in Melbourne and their kids are my age and go to Jewish schools and retire. Uh, last year uh, I made my bat mitzvah because I don't know I, I wanted to do it I feel it was something and so but to do it uh, I made it I did it in the so far, uh, in the Sephardi level. So I had to go for classes there for a whole year. So we've been like going to the synagogue like for two, three years already. And that's like the main connection to the community we have. My mom is completely Orthodox, which is the case with most converted Jews. That they're more Jewish than normal Jews. I have gone to like Sunday schools. Uh, the year of my bat mitzvah, it was required to go to Hebrew school if you needed, a, if you wanted lessons with the cantor. So, yeah. And then a year after that, I went to Hebrew school at the Jewish Theological Seminary at a program called Ivory Prose Door, which was more about intellectual Judaism than religious Judaism. My grandmother is Ashkenazi. This is a community. Mm -hmm. like all the all the Pesach and all, all the holidays in Jewish. We celebrate with the family and like the family of my grandmother are so big. Uh, she have six brothers and sisters, and his her fra her father and her mother. And all the holidays Jewish, she celebrate. It's a it's hard to define when I decided that I was Jewish as opposed to just following the fact that my parents are Jewish but at this point I feel like it is my personal decision to actively follow Jewish traditions and cultures. I think that happened around the time I got to high school. And I'm not, I don't think any particular event inspired it but I, I feel that I am Jewish on my own because it's something that I connect to and I think that Judaism is just a religion based on being a good human, which works for me. I don't know, I'm very torn because I really started to resent the Jewish community. I think it's insular, socially it works on a really awful hierarchy that is there to boost, I mean as every hierarchy is, it's there to boost the esteem of those at the top of it and make everyone else feel awful. and. It's just way too much of a bubble. And so often I'm just like, no, it's awful. I don't want any part of that. I don't want this. Uh, all our world in Mexico is Jewish. Like, we go to this, because you said it, to the center so to sports, uh -huh. kind of that. It's Jewish. Like, all my friends are Jewish. Um. And I basically just feel connection to Judaism through my youth because I grew up as a Jew. and. I don't feel religious, I don't, I don't know if I believe in God, so I don't know, I'm definitely not orthodox, but still I go to synagogue, and it's really contradictory what I do, like I go to synagogue and I pray, but still I don't keep Shabbos, and I don't know, it's just, just a thing that is part of my life. And then I think about it and there's a lot of things that I take for granted, like some things about a community are really nice, 
not just the community, just some things about Judaism are really nice. Like, there were points this year I really hated Judaism. It's stupid. And I still think being religious is pretty silly. But <laughs> um, I don't know. That's like a question I ask myself. Like I say, oh, I don't want to be Jewish. I don't want to be this, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to it, there's a lot that I feel like if I didn't raise my kids Jewish in some sort of way, they'd miss out that I'd gain. There's an Israeli Day Parade that the members of Hashem Hatzir take part in every year. And we march always with the goal for peace, whether that means a two-state solution, whether that means not moving. Whatever will get us peace, that's what we march for. And there are rows of streets where first you get like Palestinian activists that are booing us because we're Zionist and we're taking their land. And then you get right next to them a, a block of religious Jews that are booing us because we're in the Holy Land and we're blocking the Messiah from coming. And then you get Jews just kind of sitting there not knowing what the, who the hell we are. So it's, it's entirely a mix. The communities are pretty separate. It's like either, it's like most are kind of secular, traditional, and then some modern Orthodox come under that. Like some people are more traditional. Or I sometimes go to the Sephardi synagogue, like the Sephardi community, because all my family is Sephardi. So we go there like in the Hagim, and sometimes in Shabbat. Well, there's one big organization of all the Jewish communities. Like the normal community is almost the Orthodox one, because the Persian one is a bit like it's closed in in himself, in itself, and uh, the reformed it's re the reformed community it's really small and it's not recognized by the big community. Most of our rabbis think that we're orthodox and they try to make us orthodox and they want us orthodox, but basically most of Jews don't know that they're Jews or they're secular and come only on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, we have a big community of Ochadash, which is like the reformed Judaism. We have a lot of I know a lot of people there. My parents and I are part of a reform synagogue. Pretty much all the Jews live like in a good, um, a good like uh, part of the city, and all, they all have um, like mi like middle class, but like upper middle class. So the reform community is not in part of this organization because the religious ones w won't be in their in their organizations anymore in the organization anymore if they accept them. So it's kind of an issue, especially because, for example, my community, which is the biggest, they have connections to the other community, but it's like it's always an issue because they have to be like in between. It's more secular. Like we we have Chabad people, of course, which are they really religious, but it's yes, it's secular. Um, yeah, between the Jewish schools, there's a lot of interaction. Like the community is very into being friends with other schools. The cool thing. The community really doesn't work a lot to bring Jewish people that are not really involved in it. Like they don't work a lot to to bring people inside. Right now, the community is really far away from everything, and it's so expensive. But there, and there is just one Jewish school. There is another one in a city in the coast, but in, in Santiago there is just one. There is a big, really religious community, and there's a kind of big, rather small, secular um, community. And then you have something in between where like, a big part of them are modern Orthodox. Um, and many people, are, many people don't decide to be secular, but they decide just not to be connected and not to care about. So that's not secular anymore, that's just like, they just don't do anything and they don't think about that they do anything. They hate each other, and but I don't know why. I, it's like Bulgarian Jewish community is not that big, so they they should cooperate. Like they make com compromises, but they hate each other. Yeah, we have like uh, um, a lot of uh, activities, activities together, all the together. Yeah, it's not so difficult to be part of the Jewish community. <laughs> It's New York City, it's the second largest population of Jews in the world, so there are just so many different communities, it's, it's impossible to answer that question. They say like we are the rich ones and 
They control all Mexico, and there are, we are like millions of Jewish in Mexico, but nope, we are like only 40,000. We are a little um, community in Mexico. And they say like we are a lot of Jewish because we are like only in just like concentrate, concentrate um, in the place. Village. Yeah, we are like a village. So in that village, we are like all the Jewish. And that's why they say like we are a lot of Jewish, but we are not. No, so yeah, much. it's the pen yeah. song. Yeah, and it's like the big deal that the first initiative in Switzerland, when they, the first time the the people could could bring up initiatives and vote for it. Um, the first thing they, they um, the first vote wa was to to forbid um, kosher housing. Slaughtering. Slaughtering. So that's not allowed in Switzerland now, and it's the first thing the people wanted. So that's like a big deal, which was always claimed that like, Swiss, Switzerland is anti-Semitic. But it's like, they try to change it after, but now it's just like with all the animal organizations and everything, they will never change it again. But I don't know, they still think that Jews have money, which is true, and still think that Jews have big noses, which is true. Although I'm, so, I'm, I'm converted, I still have a big nose, I don't know why. When you live with so many Jews in New York City, and then such a such a, such a small concentration of Jews, you're bound to pick up on the stereotypes and the jokes. And so, there's the idea of, oh, we were in the shtetl and we didn't know anything, and we were only with Jews, and it was this and it was that. But I think that it was they all felt a strong sense of community in their schools. There are people in the city that don't know anything about Judaism who think that they've never met a Jew. I once had someone ask me whether Jews just believe. No, whether Jews believe that Jesus is God or that, wait, hang on. She asked me, do you believe in God and Jesus or just Jesus? I was <laughs> like, what? I don't know, they feel probably a lot of guilt. I mean, the Austrians were starters of the Holocaust with the Germans. And there's still a lot of guilt from Austrians. And when they talk with a Jew or when they discover that you're a Jew, they're like, more in a distance and to try to be more polite, to try to give you favors sometimes. It's, it's not like favors like it's money, but like just to like give you more food, I know what, stuff like that. Like they don't like Jews. The Bulgaria, they do, they like only Bulgarians. I know that it's like, it's hard because in Chile there is the biggest uh, Arab community in the world, like besides the Arab countries, so it's like, uh, it's not easy because now it's not that much like it, but it, I know that sometimes it's been really like having like a lot of anti-Semitism. I don't think so. The Jewish news would tell you yes. We have some problems of racism as in all Europe and almost all the world, but it's okay. Like the Catholic Church is like a really important like voice like uh, thing in the country. So, and they really don't like the Jews much. But for example, for Rosh Hashanah, the president is coming in the synagogue. In the synagogue, but that's only for political reasons. It's not that they so much like us. I mean, for instance, on our Ken, we have. Do I have to explain what Ken is? Okay. Um, so we have really cool, like, it's not graf it's like graffiti art, you know, of a chutzah and all this stuff. And this year someone painted a black, a huge black swastika over it. But the thing is, I don't actually think it was racism. I think it was, you know, 14 year old boys saying, oh, let's do something rebellious. We know that this is bad. And so they're doing it. No one in Australia actually hates Jews. They're too busy hating Asians and <laughs> other people <laughs> other than Jews. So no, I w I've never, ever felt it. Like people say things that are, that Jews might say is anti-Semitic, like, I don't know if this happened in America, but non-Jews, instead of saying stingy, they say don't be Jewish. But it's not like people don't think about it and that they actually think that Jews are stingy and horrible people, it's just the way they talk. Uh, once it happened, like, I didn't know if to tell a friend or no, because, like, I, I was, in, like, we've been friends for a while, and then I found out he was kind of a Nazi. Like neo Nazi? They only ask me, is where, where is my tail? And we're kind of hiding. And 
if you like my if my non-jewish friends ask me where i'm going i just prefer to tell them that i go to meet some friends not that i tell them okay i'm going to the synagogue for shabbat so you try not to tell them that you're involved in the jewish community i think that judaism is too much of an important part of for me to not want to put it i my original learning was to not put it on my children because I feel like when you're younger, religion does need to be put on you, but then hopefully they'll go through a process like I did, like I'm assuming my parents did, of reclaiming the religion or like re-deciding to join the religion once they're older. I think so. It's... Mm, I was raised like that. I think even if I won't speak about... I won't think about it, it will be like that because it's part of what I am. And I like to raise them as Jews because I think you get pretty stuff. Like to have like a connection with something, with tradition and roots and and like to feel part of something. For me it's been really important. I'll definitely not going to read to, to reach them like to to raise them Orthodox. But Jewish, yeah, of course. Mainly because of the values. I don't think that I'm the one who wants to, to decide that. I'm going to give them the... like Because I'm not sure if I'm marrying a Jewish man or not. So if it, he's not Jewish, I'm going to, to give them the, the choice. Like, I'm going to send them to the Jewish camps and if they like it, they like it. If it, they don't like it, eh, that's, that's life.